Do you like putting your balls on people? Well, Blizzard wants us to, so let's get started. For some reason, I decided to do all 74 hero achievements and put them into a tier list. And I didn't really realize how long this would take. So sit back, relax, and keep in mind that I may have put them in the wrong spot or you may disagree with me. So feel free to respectfully comment down below. And if I missed anything or if you found a way to do an achievement super easily, I'll try and update the pinned comment with any revelations that we found. But nonetheless, like and subscribe, and let's get started. With that being said, the easiest hero achievement in the game is Symmetra's Pixel Spray. All you gotta do for Symmetra's Pixel Spray is hit an enemy with three beams simultaneously as Symmetra in Quick Play or Competitive. So all you gotta do is place all three turrets and have them hit someone. The second easiest achievement is Sombra's Pixel Spray. Sombra's Pixel Spray, all you gotta do is hack 15 enemies without dying as Sombra. So just place a translocator, go invisible, hack people until you get the achievement, and hope you don't die. The next hardest is Symmetra's Cute Spray. All you gotta do is teleport 20 players in a single quick play or competitive match. This can be farmed really really easily by placing a teleporter and just telling your team to go through it. You also don't even have to do it in one life, so it's even easier. The only thing that can cause this to be difficult is if your teammates do not go through your teleporter, but realistically, as long as you're placing good teleporters or you have friends, it's super easy. Before we go on to the next one, I actually originally had Mercy's Cute Spray here because all you have to do is resurrect six people without dying. And that's super, super simple if you just have a Farah killing themselves in spawn or next to spawn. And then you can just sit in spawn, resurrect them, and do that until you lose the match, but you'll get the achievement at least. However, since I'm assuming that some people don't have friends, I'm going to actually not place it yet, and I'll put it just somewhere later. But as a mental note, I would put Mercies here because if a friend just kills themselves over and over again, it's pretty simple. Next up is Tracer's Pixel. Tracer's Pixel, you have to recover 400 health using Tracer's Recall without dying. The reason that's so easy is because you have almost complete control over it. If you want to get shot, you just get shot, you recall, and then you blink away, you wait, and you do that over and over again. There is a little bit of risk involved, but if you're trying to get it, you're probably going to get it eventually. It is very, very easy to get. And even if you mess up and die, you can just try again, and like I said, super easy. Next up is Mercy's Pixel. For Mercy's Pixel, all you gotta do is restore 200 health for 5 players without dying. Unfortunately, since I already have this achievement, I don't know if that means that you also have to take self-healing because it says heal 5 players without dying, and there's only 4 players that you can heal besides yourself. However, just healing 200 health for each player on your team, it is not that hard as long as you don't have a Sombra really far back in their backline. Just playing Mercy and you'll get it eventually. It's pretty easy. Next up is Mora's Pixel. As Mora, you must fully deplete both your balls. All you gotta do is yeet a damage orb into the enemy team. And then from there, just wait till your tank gets her and then yeet a ball at them. You can even tell them to follow it and eventually it will get drained. If you have someone willing to help you, they can go far out and just shoot themselves in a corner and then you can just throw a heal orb. And as long as the heal orb doesn't fly away, it will deplete the ball and you'll get it. So as long as your balls get depleted, you're good. And the final one I'm going to put in very easy is Ryan's Pixel. For Ryan's Pixel, you got to block 8,000 damage with his barrier field without dying. So basically, if you're ever getting spawn camped, just put your shield up, sit next to the spawn door, and let them break your barrier over and over again. The biggest challenge with this achievement is that if you are doing that strategy, it's not getting reported when you don't do anything and you just farm shield blocking damage. Moving on to the easy tier. The easy tier still has very easy achievements, there just might be some sort of roadblock in the way. As an example, I'm going to put Torbjorn's Pixel Spray as the easiest in the easy tier. My headset just died. Torbjorn's Pixel Spray tells you to absorb 500 armor damage with Torbjorn's Overload without dying. Unlike Chaser's Recall, Torbjorn doesn't have a get out of jail free card, and as a matter of fact, his get out of jail free card he has to use in order to get the damage. So it can't just be armor damage, it has to be during overload. Realistically, all you gotta do is overload, take some damage, run away, and just do that over and over again. It just is a little harder than everything else, because you actually have to put yourself in more precarious situations. Although I do have to say, it's probably just as easy as Reinhardt's, it just has a little bit more risk to it. Now I'm gonna go charge my headset. Before we continue, I just realized I put the wrong spray in there, so we'll ignore that. Except in reality, I'm going to be putting Reinhardt's Cute Spray in easy, sorry about that. For Reinhardt's Cute Spray, all you gotta do is land an Earth Shatter, Fire Strike, and Charge. It doesn't even have to be a kill. 
The only challenge of this is actually landing an Earth Shatter and then Fire Striking and Charging because you can be killed during it or stunned or something like that. In reality though, most of the time you're gonna hit a Shatter, Fire Strike, and then charge someone anyways. It's pretty easy as long as you can hit some of your Earth Shatters. Next up after Reinhardt is Hammond's Cute Spray. For Hammond's Cute Spray, you gotta roll through four enemies within two seconds as Wrecking Ball. As long as the enemy is grouped up, you can just roll through them. The only thing stopping you is if they are not grouped up, in that case, it's a little bit harder. However, in a lot of scenarios, the enemies are going to be all together, especially in something like Overtime, so you can just quickly roll through all of them, and there you go. Next up is Junker Queen's Cute Spray. For Junker Queen's Cute Spray, you gotta hit the knife, pull them in, and then hit them with the Carnage, and then just make sure that kills them. There will be times where you don't kill them, there will be times where you miss the knife, there may even be times where you miss the axe. However, as long as you're playing Junker Queen correctly, you're gonna hit a Jagged Blade, pull them in, and kill them with the axe eventually. Next up is Brigitte's Cute Spray. For Brigitte's Cute Spray, all you gotta do is kill an enemy while they are airborne. The easiest way to do this is to find a low health Farah and hit them, although it is kind of hard to hit. So it's most likely gonna happen when an enemy just jumps, you hit them with it, and you just get a random kill because they randomly jumped and you'll get the achievement. This is one of those achievements that can take you a little longer to get, However, like I said, as long as you're playing Brigitte correctly, you'll eventually get it. And just in case I forgot to mention it, I am better at some heroes than others. Brigitte does happen to be a character that I am pretty good at. So for me, this would not take very long. However, for some people, this might be a little higher up. Next up is Ash's Pixel Spray. For Ash's Pixel Spray, what you gotta do is kill an enemy by shooting Ash's Dynamite from at least 30 meters away. This can be really, really easy on maps like Colosseo, where you can just throw the dynamite across the map and shoot it. However, you do have to get a kill with it, and that's the hard part. When I got mine, I was on King's Row. I just shot it down a corridor, blew it up, and luckily my Winston jumped in there and got someone low, and I got the final blow. It's not the hardest thing ever, it's just a bit situational. And like a lot of these achievements, as long as you're trying to get it, you'll get it eventually without much skill. And that is why it's so low down, although I can see this taking a while for you to get, it's not that hard. Just practice shooting the dynamite and you're good. Next up is Winston's Pixel Spray. Looking back, I am actually going to be preemptively moving Winston a little bit more down. For Winston's Pixel, you gotta destroy 10 turrets or traps using Winston's Tesla Cannon. In most scenarios, you'll want to play Winston into Symmetra, try your best not to die, and just destroy your turrets over and over again. Like I said, this is not a hard achievement, it's more of that you have to get the characters that actually have traps or turrets. I also am unsure if Hammond's mines count as traps or turrets, I kind of doubt it. However, it's even easier if that's a thing. You can tell me down in the comments if it is, but I already have the achievement so I can't really test it. However, this is an easy achievement and I wish I put it a little earlier. However, it's still easy. Next up is Ramatra's Pixel. For Ramacha's Pixel, you gotta block 300 damage or more and survive in a single use of Nemesis form. The hard part about this one is actually surviving. You may want to have a Pocket Mercy on you while trying this. However, it's really not that hard to block 300 damage. And again, looking at it, this might be a little easier than the other three I just put. So I moved Ramacha's Pixel down just a little bit. Like I said, this list isn't permanent. I keep changing it over and over again. So feel free to put your opinions down in the comments. Also remember that there are 74 achievements, and I may put one in the wrong place, so sorry if I do. Next is Hammond's Pixel Spray, and again I'm going to actually move it down a little bit. Absorb 1500 damage with Wrecking Ball's Adaptive Shields without dying. Again, this is one of those where you just have to not die, you just gotta go in, get some shields, get shot at, run away, and just do that over and over again. As long as you play carefully, you're good. The only reason it's even this high is because you can get stunned out of it, you can get hindered, hacked, all that stuff. Wrecking Ball is a little easier to counter. Unlike, let's say, Sombra's Pixel, where you can literally be invisible forever, hack people every four seconds, translocate out if you need, and then Hammond can just get stunned out the wazoo, so it's a little bit harder, although it's still kind of easy. Next is Sigma's Pixel. Gain 350 shields with a single use of Sigma's Kinetic Grasp. Really, all you gotta do is find one Bastion who's kind of stupid, have him go into sentry form and just suck at him. Uh, you'll get 350 shields eventually by doing that. The only issue is if they don't shoot into you, which will happen a lot. However, if you ever see a Bastion on the enemy team, just quickly switch to Sigma and just surprise suck him. It's not a mechanically hard achievement, you just need to know when to suck someone. A similar achievement to Sigma's Pixel 
is Diva's Pixel. I almost grabbed the wrong one. Prevent 1,500 damage with a single use of Diva's Defense Matrix. In my opinion, this is somewhat harder. However, just like Sigma, if you find the Bastion on the enemy team and he's not very bright, he might just shoot into you. And since he has infinite bullets in his sentry form and you do not gain anything from Defense Matrixing it, he will just keep shooting you unlike Sigma. So it is a little easier to get all that damage. However, she does have a higher number. I personally think it's a little harder. However, it's still kind of easy. It's not super demanding. Just Defense Matrix Sebastian. And he might just shoot into you because there's no point in not shooting you. You can also do it on other characters, but Bastions are obviously the easiest target. Next on our list is Kiriko's Cute Spray. For Kiriko's Cute Spray, you gotta restore 1,500 health and land 5 critical headshots without dying. Heal botting your tank is super easy, so you'll eventually get 1,500 healing. Kiriko also has multiple abilities to help her survive, so it's pretty easy not to die. And I would say the only mechanical difficult thing is hitting 5 critical hits. However, for someone like me, it's not that hard. So I think it's pretty easy, I just put it a little higher up than I would normally. Just because some people can't aim. However, this relatively is a pretty easy achievement. You just heal 1,500 and then hit 5 headshots. Next up is Widowmaker's Pixel. For Widowmaker's Pixel, you gotta kill 4 enemies using Widowmaker's Venomine during a single quick play or competitive game which sounds harder than it actually is. How I got this achievement was I would just yeet my Venomine into the middle of a team fight, and you do not have to get the final blow, you just gotta get an elimination using it. So if you're above the enemy, you just yeet a Venomine, you hit a couple people. If any of them die, that counts. As long as you get the assist, of course. It's not super hard, not mechanically demanding. It's a little bit luck-based because you actually gotta get the kills. However, you don't even have to do it in one life, it's just throughout the game, so it's even easier. If this was Final Blows, this achievement would be much, much higher. But it's not, so it's down here. After that, we got Ana's Pixel. For Ana's Pixel, you gotta interrupt an enemy ultimate with her Sleep Dart. The best way to do this is just Sleep Dart Cassidy while he's high nooning. A lot of Cassidy's will just high noon for big plays and you can just sleep him out of it. There are some other ultimates, like you can cancel Reinhardt Shatter, or maybe you can sleep Farah or Sigma if you're lucky. You just gotta make sure not to sleep someone like Soldier or let's say Junkrat when he's already tiring because that won't actually cancel the ultimate, it will just put them to sleep. This achievement is not the hardest thing ever because ultimates get cancelled pretty often or I should say Cassidy's ultimate gets cancelled pretty often. So eventually you'll get a dumb Cassidy on the enemy team, he'll high noon, you just sleep him and there you go. It is easy, it just has to happen. In the same boat is Roadhog's Pixel. All you gotta do is cancel an ultimate with Roadhog's chain hook. It's the exact same as Ana, but with his hook. And you would think it's easier because it's on a shorter cooldown. And it might be. The only reason that I put it just very slightly higher is because Ana can hit it from longer ranges while it's kind of Roadhog's win condition. So it might be on cooldown during that vital moment of canceling an ultimate. While Ana, if she's playing well, should only be using your sleep dart on those big play moments or if she's being dove. Basically what I'm saying is that it's a little harder to be in a position to cancel an ultimate as Roadhog, while Ana can sleep dart someone from across the map. I'm talking about you Cassidy's. Stop getting your ultimate cancelled. And the final one in easy tier is Mercy's Q. Granted, I'm gonna put an asterisk here. This achievement is very very easy. If you have a friend that is willing to just feed for you, it is not very easy if you don't. So you gotta resurrect 6 people within 1 life. That means you have to at least survive for 3 minutes, at least that's given the best scenario, and get all 6 reses off successfully. If you have a friend, have them go Farah, they'll go to the spawn door, they'll die, you res them from within spawn, and you do that 6 times. You might get reported, but you'll get the achievement, I think. Obviously I've not tested this, I got this legitly when you could do mass res. However, if you cannot do that, then you just gotta play really safe, just resurrect your teammates when you can, bail out of fights early, ultimate if you need to. And it's not the hardest achievement ever, I would probably put it in average though. If you do not have any friends, if you do have a friend, it's very easy, just have them perish over and over again. Now we are moving on to the average difficulty tier. This means that you might not have much control on whether you're going to get the achievement or not, while you need a little bit of skill in order to pull it off. Once we get into the average difficulty, it's really just about who you are good at. Like I said earlier, I can hit a flail mid-air as Brigitte pretty easily, 
while rolling through four people as Hammond might be a little bit more difficult for me. So even though I attempted to put them in order, they're still in the same tier, so they should be around the same difficulty. It really just depends on your skill level with that hero. So the one that I think is personally the easiest out of the average ones is probably Lucio's cute spray. Just if you ever get Graviton like Grav Dragon, just drop the beat. You might die, but you might get the achievement. It's pretty easy if those ultimate combos happen. If not, you're going to be just waiting for a while until one does. Oh, I should probably mention that you got to block 1000 damage with a single use of Lucio Sound Barrier. So just if your team gets Gravitoned, just drop the beat and hopefully you'll get shot enough that it gives you the achievement. Like I said, this really, really works when somebody shoots a Hanzo Dragon. You can just tell your team, hey, can we all feed real quick so I get the achievement? So it's even easier with friends and that's about it. In the very same boat is Zenyatta's Q. It is more or less the same thing. Restore 1,500 health with a single use of Zenyatta's Transcendence. If there's a Grav Dragon, just ultimate and you'll get it. This is what I mean by the average achievement difficulties are a little bit weird to rank. Because these two achievements are not skill intensive at all. However, it may take you a lot of games to get them because you may just never get those scenarios where you'll get so much damage blocked or healed that you get the achievement. One that is a bit more in your control is Brigitte's Pixel, although it is a little bit harder to do. Unlike the other ultimate cancellation achievements, you gotta interrupt an enemy ultimate with Brigitte's Shield Bash. The reason that this one is so hard is because you only get about two chances to do this during your ultimate. So not only do you have to be ultimating, but the enemy has to be doing an ultimate that you can cancel with your Shield Bash. The best way to do this is to have a Cassidy High Noon, Pop your ultimate in his face and then shield bash him. Hitting the shield bash itself is not the hard part because you basically got the Great Wall of China just as a shield. The hardest part is actually knowing when to pop your ultimate in order to cancel the ultimate. However, if you do have really poor game sense, you may just be ultimating and shield bashing and you may just accidentally hit someone. However, the more consistent way is wait for someone to ultimate, ultimate yourself and then shield bash them. But there are very few ultimates that you can do that with, so hey Cassidy, you feel like ultimating. <laughs> Next up is Zarya's Pixel. For Zarya's Pixel, you got to keep your power above 70 for a minute. This might be one of those where I'm a little bit biased with it. Basically, all you got to do is take damage by pulling up your bubble, have them shoot you, and just have your charge above 70. In my opinion, the best way to get this is to pop your bubble in a choke point, take all that damage, and then get out and just do that over and over again. This is even easier if you have someone like Baptiste who can shield you just in case, or Kiriko who can help Suzu you, or Life Weaver to pull you out, or honestly just any support at that point. And all you gotta do is just keep farming charge. You can be aggressive and actually play the game normally, but if you kill them you might lose that charge. So really just taking the damage and not really doing much yourself, that might be the best way to just get it. With a lot of the earlier achievements like Reinhardt's Q, you may have to play very very passively and just farm mitigation. And with Sarya, I think that's the best way to do it, especially if they have a Junkrat or a Bastion. The only reason that it's so high up is because it is genuinely kind of hard, or at least hard for people who don't know how to play Zarya. However, for people who do know how to play Zarya and are playing passively to get the achievement, you'll probably get it in one or two games depending on the situation. But in the ideal scenario, it's decently easy. But just because there's so much randomness and because it is somewhat difficult, I'll put it in average. Like I said earlier, there's a bunch of varying factors on whether you're going to get the achievement or not. So this is my best placement for Zarya's Pixel. Next up is Life Weaver's Q. For Life Weaver's Q, you got to restore 1,200 health with a single use of Life Weaver's Tree. If you do not know, Life Weaver's Tree does a bunch of healing when it is placed and then does pulses afterwards. So the main way you want to try and get this is seeing a bunch of your teammates injured and then popping your tree. However, this can be a little bit difficult, especially if you mess up and one of your teammates dies, or let's say you pop it too early and you sustain your team a bit too well. I do think that Life Weaver's Q is a little bit harder than Zenyatta's and Lucio's, because Zenyatta and Lucio just have to press a funny button, while Life Weaver's Tree, you actually have to time it really, really well to get a big burst of healing, and then make sure that your team keeps getting pulse healed. And you also have to make sure your tree doesn't get destroyed, but realistically, that's probably not going to happen. It isn't the hardest achievement ever. However, it's a little bit out of your control, and it's a little bit difficult, but not too much. So it's about average. Next up is Ash's Q. 
With Ash's Q, you gotta nail someone with Bob and then get the final blow on them with your gun. The first thing that you actually have to do is hit someone with Bob, which can be difficult on its own. And then once you do finally hit someone with Bob, you gotta then shoot them mid-air and kill them. And the worst part is, is that you might hit someone like Reinhardt who's just shielding, so it's impossible to kill him that way. However, if you do hit someone like Cassidy and he goes into the air and you body shot him, he could just straight up not die, which would suck. And even then, Bob might shoot him, so you may not even get the kill. However, Bob killing them midair might count towards the achievement, I don't know. However, I don't think it matters too much because most likely Bob won't be shooting them that fast. So it's really all about who you hit and when you hit them with Bob. I think the easiest way to get this achievement is to throw Bob down a choke point. It will probably hit someone, and you just gotta hope it's a DPS or support, and make sure you at least body shot them, and they might be damaged enough for you to get it. The reason that this one is where it is, is because it's kind of hard to hit Bob, it's kind of hard to shoot someone midair, and there's a lot of things that can cuck you over, plus it's an ultimate. However, it's not the hardest thing ever, at least for me. It's just spam Bob down choke points, and then eventually he'll hit someone, and then when he does hit someone, make sure you shoot them, and there's a chance they won't die, but when they do, you'll get the achievement. On top of that, if you have teammates helping you, hopefully the backline will be somewhat injured, so body shots will be more plausible, and if you hit a headshot, you're basically guaranteed to get the achievement. After that, we got Farah's Pixel, which I'm going to actually move down under Ash, just because Ash has a lot of factors that can cut you over. While Farah's main issue with her pixel achievement being that you have to be on a map with a cliff. For Farah's pixel, all you gotta do is knock someone to their death with a concussive blast. It really is not super hard to knock someone off the map with concussive blast. I think the biggest issue with it is that a lot of people know that you're gonna be trying to knock them off, so they'll probably stay away from cliffs, which is probably why I originally had Ashes a little easier than Farah's. However, now that I've made that correction, all you really gotta do is get on a good map have at least one player be kind of dumb, hit the concussive blast. It's not the hardest achievement ever, it's just map dependent and player dependent on how stupid the enemy team is. Plus you gotta know how to hit concussive blasts, but like I said, it's not the hardest thing ever, so it's just average. From there, I'm gonna actually include Orisa's pixel also. For Orisa's pixel, you gotta knock someone to their death with Orisa's javelin. This is harder than Farah's pixel because Orisa will just knock someone backwards while the concussive blast can be used Pretty much anywhere you can place it wherever you need however knocking someone into the hole in ilios is not the hardest thing ever especially when the enemy tank is stupid you also have javelin spin to help put them in a good position for you to knock them off although just like farah you got to be on a good map for it and you got to be at least okay at orissa because it's not the hardest thing ever to hit the javelin but it's definitely not the easiest especially when you got to hit someone off the cliff and most likely people will be avoiding cliffs when you're playing orissa but like I said, it only takes one dumb player, and you'll knock them off. Next is Mora's Cute Spray, and I'll actually put this above Ash for once. I don't know why, but I remember Mora's Cute Spray taking me a really long time to get. All you gotta do is hit six targets simultaneously with Mora's Coalescence. So you just gotta spam your ultimate down to choke point. I actually probably should put this lower down, but I have PTSD of never getting this achievement for like months. So if you don't know, with Coalescence, you can damage people and heal people. I do not know if you actually have to do healing and damage for it to count. So if all of your teammates just lined up and then you hit two enemies, would that count? I'm not sure. However, if you do end up healing and damaging six people in a row, there is a freaking spider over there. That thing is huge. Oh my god, that's like, am I going to turn into Spider-Man if that thing bites me? Oh, <laughs> Why are you in my house? Why? There's a freaking roly-poly too, you see that guy? Oh, that's why he's out here. He's hunting. Update on the situation. I had Operation drop the book on him, but that freaking cord there made the book move and he bolted under the door. Spider update number three, doggo being cute. It has now been 24 hours since the spider incident and I really hope we don't have a sequel, so let's continue. Uh, the next one apparently is Roadhog's Q. Where is he? There we go. For Roadhog's Q, you gotta knock two enemies to their death in one use of Roadhog's Whole Hog. I do remember this one taking me a while, but when I got it, it was pretty easy. It's just I was on Li Sheng, they were going over the bridge, and I just ulted them off. However, that's very situational, and people are probably gonna be paying attention. 
However, Roadhog's ultimate is a little easier to knock someone off than, let's say, Arisa's Javelin. It's just more that you have to have your ultimate, you have to have a good map, and you have to have two people who are going to fall off the map if you ultimate them. Next up is Junkrat's Pixel. For Junkrat's Pixel, you gotta knock someone into the air with the Concussive Blast, and then have them land in your Steel Trap. This one is probably a little bit luck based just because people will be flung in a random direction and it's really hard to aim someone towards your trap. However, I think the best way to get this is to throw a trap behind them and then mine them, and then hopefully they'll back up into it. This one I got completely and utterly randomly, and even though I think you can try and get it, I don't really know how easy it is to actually do. So I put it in average because it does seem like an average difficulty. I just think it's kind of impossible to knock someone directly into the trap and you can do your best to direct them towards that way, but it's very likely that they won't directly land into it. Next up is Tracer's Q. I thought about putting this one farther down because it's honestly not the hardest thing ever. All you gotta do is stick four of Tracer's Pulse Bombs onto enemies. You don't even have to kill them. So what I recommend is go up to the tank, pulse bomb them, and that's it. I do have to say that it's very, very possible that you get someone like Junker Queen who's a little bit harder to stick. You also have to get four pulse bombs in a single game, so unless you're playing competitive, it's going to be a little bit hard to do this in quick play. However, if you are able to get those pulse bombs and then you stick the tank, you should get this easily, and it doesn't have to be in a row, it doesn't have to be in a single life, you just got to stick four pulse bombs. I put it in average difficulty because I think the average person might have trouble sticking every pulse bomb. On top of that, a lot of people don't play competitive, so getting four pulse bombs in a single match in the first place in quick play is a little difficult. So it's a little higher up than I personally think it is, but this is for the average player, and I think the average player would struggle a little bit, but it's not the hardest thing ever. Next up is Widowmaker's Q. For Widowmaker's Q, you gotta kill an enemy with a scoped headshot while airborne. Most people attempting to get this achievement are probably grappling into the air, scoping in, and trying to headshot kill someone. However, you can actually get this achievement by just falling off something. I personally didn't even know that I was falling and got it somehow. I think I was just on a sloped incline at the time and I hit a headshot and I just got it and I was like, okay. So you might get someone accidentally. However, you gotta hit a scoped headshot in the first place and I think some people just cannot aim for the life of them. While other people are just really, really good at aiming, so it's a little bit hard to put this in a good place. So I'm going to put Widowmaker's Q in average, because the average player will have an average time getting this. It is truly about how well you can aim, and that's about it. And like I said, I think the average person, averagely aiming, after averagely jumping off of something, it might take them a few games, but they'll get it eventually, hopefully. And again, you can just play Widowmaker normally, and you might get booped into the air or something and just get it that way. Next up is Sojourn's Pixel, which is very similar to Widowmaker's Q. For Sojourn's Pixel, you gotta kill an enemy with a charged railgun headshot while sliding. Kinda like Widowmaker's, you just gotta be good at aiming and find a somewhat low health target because you can no longer one shot or find a mercy pocket. But really all you gotta do is slide and then kill someone with a headshot. For someone who never plays Sojourn, this is very, very hard. For someone who plays Sojourn all the time, it might take you a couple tries, but you'll get it pretty easily. For the average player, I think it'd take a little bit of time, but especially with a Mercy Pocket, this isn't the hardest thing ever. You just gotta be able to aim, and I think the aiming achievements are about average, so I put them in average. Next up is Echo's Pixel. For Echo's Pixel, you gotta get two killing blows with a single use of Echo's Focusing Beam. In my opinion, this is the easiest achievement out of the two kills with one ability. Focusing Beam does a lot of damage and it works on low health targets, so if there's two low health targets next to each other, you can just beam them both down. I personally think that this one is not as hard as Widowmakers and Sojourns, however it's a lot more situational because there is going to be a lot of scenarios where you could get the achievement but then someone steals it or they go far apart or they just have too much health or a barrier or a life grip or whatever. But this achievement is not too hard, you just gotta get two low health targets next to each other in the first place, and that's the hard part. So it's about average. Next up is Ramacha's Cute Spray. For Ramacha's Cute Spray, you gotta eliminate three enemies in a single use of Ramacha's Annihilation. Uh, this is very easy. I personally think this achievement is kind of easy, because a lot of people die to Annihilation for some reason. Especially in something like Overtime. In Overtime, people will have to come to you, and they have to die to your ultimate. So you'll get it that way pretty easily. Honestly, for the average player, this might be easier than the aiming ones. But yeah, basically Annihilation is a pretty easy ultimate to use. 
And especially if you can force them into you, you're going to get those kills. You're going to get those three eliminations. And I'm surprised it's not four eliminations, but it's three, which makes it easier. And Ramach's ultimate is not that hard, so it's about average. Next up is Sombra's Cute Spray. You gotta hack five enemies at once with Sombra's EMP. Again, this is one of those achievements that isn't super hard. It's more of situational. So if you see all five of them and you can EMP them, you will get the achievement. But if they're spread apart or they have a Sombra in your backline so you can't EMP them, you're not gonna get this achievement. However, it's not impossible to have all five of them next to each other. So you can just kind of wait it out. And then when you see all five of them, just EMP. It's just more of having them be all together in the first place. EMP is also very easy to hit. So hitting all five of them with EMP, not the hardest thing ever. So it's about average. Next up is Winston's Q. With Winston's Q, you got to damage five enemies during a single use of Winston's Primal Rage. This one took me a couple tries personally because it is a little difficult to play Winston when you don't play him. So keeping track of five enemies while not dying and making sure you damage them, it can be a little difficult. It's also not the most efficient thing ever. But getting Winston's Q is not the... Did that get caught on... Yeah, it did. Why are you telling me to free up freaking space? I do not care. As I was saying, I think my main issue with Winston's Q spray is actually hitting five people because you have to keep track of them and then not die. For some people, this might be easier. For others, it might be harder. So I just put it in average. Now, before we go on, I forgot to put Maze Pixel down. Originally, I had Maze Pixel in very easy, but then I realized they changed the achievement. So you gotta block 1,200 damage with your Ice Wall, but Maze Ice Wall in total only had the 1,250. So that means they have to destroy basically every pillar, which is very, very situational. So all you really gotta do is find a Trigger Happy Bastion to destroy it, which is very situational, or find a corridor that everyone on the enemy team will shoot at. So I'm gonna put it right here yeah there if you find a trigger happy bastion you'll get the achievement pretty easily if you find a good corridor you'll hopefully get it pretty easily some people will just wait it out though otherwise it's going to take you a little bit and it's going to be kind of situational but also you can make it happen if you are really really trying i'll be honest with you i have no idea where to put this average seems about right though now, the whole reason I even remember about Maze Pixel is because I was going to put Maze Cute next. For Maze Cute, you gotta freeze four enemies at once. Catching four people in your blizzard is not impossible, it's just kind of hard. But it's not hard enough to go in the hard, because Maze Blizzard is so big, you can wall them into your own blizzard. So you just gotta get a good corridor, wall them in, and just freeze them all with your ultimate. It's situational, just like a lot of achievements. So it's really about having that perfect scenario and being able to freeze them all. Next up is Zarya's Cute Spray. For Zarya's Cute Spray, you gotta capture four enemies and a single use of Zarya's Graviton. Unlike Mei, Zarya does not have a way to wall someone in into a Graviton, so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get people actually into the Graviton because it's also smaller too. However, it activates instantly and they cannot escape. Well, once you get them. However, earlier today, I actually got four people into a Graviton and got someone to play the game, so it's not impossible. It's kind of average. For some people, easier. For others, not so easy. So I think it's just average. Before we go on to the next one, I actually forgot about another pixel spray, and that's Doomfist's pixel. You gotta slam three enemies into a wall with Doomfist's empowered punch. Originally, I had this in easy because I thought it was the other achievement and I didn't know they changed it. The first thing you gotta do with Doomfist is get an Empowered Punch, and then you gotta hit three people with it. It is kind of situational because people have to be in a short radius of each other, and typically people will kind of spread apart. However, it's not impossible, and I would say it's kind of easier than some of the achievements in Average. I'll put it right above Ramatra, but, be but under Widow probably. Actually, I'm gonna put it a little up. Even though it is situational, hitting a punch is not that hard, and if you pop your ultimate, and then you just punch someone, or I should say punch into a group of people. The chances of you hitting three people is kind of likely, so it's just really about people being next to each other, and if you see three people next to each other, and you have your empowered punch, you'll probably get it. I'm not really too sure where to put this one, because again, I've never tried to do this before. I got the achievement before it was changed, so it seems about average, just kind of situational, and if you're not good at getting those empowered punches, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle bus, but that's okay. Now, just like the other time, the whole reason I remembered is because Doomfist's Q is next, 
and they actually changed it. You used to have to get six people just damaged by it, by his ultimate. But now all you got to do is hit four enemies. That's it. So if you see a group of enemies, you can pop your ult, slam down. They'll probably move away though, and that's the hard part. Really, this achievement is all about seeing a group of people and hitting them. You just got to make sure they don't run away from your ultimate. Because if they spread apart too far, you're not going to get it. So you probably want a seismic slam right in the middle of them or a rocket punch in the middle of them. Kind of bait them around the corner so they all go after you and then you ultimate and just slam immediately back down before they can run away and personally i think the situation is going to be quite common so i put in average it's just all about the execution and getting all four of them in a place where you can hit them with your ultimate and they don't suzu or teleport or all that stuff next up is echo's cute for echo's cute you got to use two other heroes ultimates as echo without dying in a quick play or competitive match the ideal scenario is you ultimate, and then you try your best to get that ultimate. You pop it, you just pop it, that's it. And then rather than going in, you just kind of sit back, relax, and you wait to get your ultimate again. You do the same thing, you just pop their ultimate again, and you get the achievement. Surviving as Echo is not the hardest thing ever because you can fly away, you do a lot of damage, and with a Mercy Pocket, you're basically unkillable in the sky. The hard part is going to be getting somebody else's ultimate two times in a row. However, if you duplicate someone like a support and then your friendly tank just takes damage, it's not going to be the hardest thing ever. I might also be a little bit biased because I like playing Echo, so I don't think this is the hardest thing ever. But they can definitely mitigate your chance of getting a duplications ultimate. So it might take you a few tries. You might die a few times before getting the second duplication. So there is definitely room for error, but this is mostly mechanical skill. It's not super luck based. So I think it's very possible it's just a little difficult for some people, about average. Next up is Torbjorn's Q. For Torbjorn's Q, you gotta kill four enemies during a single use of Torbjorn's Molten Core. So basically just nut all over the place and get four assists with it. If you are in something like a control point and you just nut at all the corridors and they just walk into it because they have to, it's overtime, they will take damage from it. And if they die, you'll get the assist for it. And as long as the whole team dies to it, you'll get it. Obviously, I made that sound more simple than it actually is, which is why it's here. However, Torbjorn's abilities are kind of passive, so just nutting everywhere. Uh, some people will just be forced to walk into it. And honestly, you have so much Molten Core, <laughs> I need to stop saying nut, that you'll get the achievement pretty easily. This is not the hardest 4k achievement in the game. Just like Ramachi, you can kind of force this to happen by waiting to overtime and then just putting it everywhere where they have to walk into it. However, you gotta kill four people, and it's not like Ramacha where it's only three. Plus, I would say getting kills with Torbjorn's Nut is a little bit harder than Ramacha's ultimate, so it's a little higher up, but Torbjorn gets a lot of passive value, and like I said, you'll just kind of get it randomly. Next up is Junker Queen's Pixel. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've been talking for like 30 minutes, and uh, I, I still am thinking of that spider. I don't know where he went. For Junker Queen's Pixel, you gotta have seven of Junker Queen's wounds active on enemies at the same time. If you do not know, you can apply multiple wounds onto someone by either gracing them, or carnaging them, or ultimating them, or even meleeing them. So the best case scenario for this is to ultimate through a bunch of people, and then you can just start meleeing people, or carnaging people, or knifing them. It's just really about applying all those wounds in a short amount of time before it goes away. I do not know if you can keep just like meleeing someone and getting it that way, because the melee damage might wear off, or multiple melees cannot be applied to the same person for this achievement, I don't know. However, this achievement is a little bit more difficult than Torbjorn's. However, since you can get it kind of randomly and you have more than just your ultimate to get this, it is a little easier than some of the others. You just have to be able to get a huge ultimate off and then just constantly melee people until you get it. Mechanically, it's not the hardest, but situational just like the other ones. Next up is Genji's Pixel. For Genji's Pixel, you gotta kill two enemies with a single use of Genji's Deflection. I mean, I personally can barely get one kill with Genji's Deflect, but this is not say final blows, you just gotta get an assist. So if you deflect something like a Junkrat Mine, and then those two people die, you'll get the achievement. You really just have to play Genji normally, and then when you see a chance to do a huge deflect, you just gotta hope that it hits multiple people, and then that those people die really quickly. If you deflect something like a Graviton into the enemy team, and then they die, that will count, so that's another thing that you could do. However, you're probably not going to be deflecting Gravitons, so just deflecting spam into people and then hoping they die really quickly so you get the achievement is probably what you want to do. 
It's situational, but the better you get at Genji, the more likely you are to get it. So it's in the higher end of average. Next is Baptiste's Pixel Spray. This one I was considering putting in hard. So if you think this is more difficult than where I'm putting it, I agree with you in a way. The only thing is that there's a lot of situations where you will get this pretty easily. And all you gotta do is prevent four deaths in a single use of Immortality Field. If Zarya and Hanzo get your whole team in a Graviton and they Hanzo Dragon you, you'll get this achievement by just placing an Immortality. It's just the fact that those situations don't happen very often. Although, if you have three friends with you, you can tell them, hey, can you guys just leap into the Hanzo Dragon so I can get the achievement? Then they all run into it, you place your Immortality, and you save those people. So this is an achievement that you can cheese, and probably the reason I put it in average, because as long as you have friends, it's not the hardest thing ever. However, if you don't have friends, you just gotta wait for the situation to place your immortality. However, it's not super skill-based, you just gotta know when to place it down, and can look straight down and press E, <laughs> that's about it. Not super hard, just situational. Unless you have friends, then you can do it pretty easily, as long as they have a lot of damage going towards you. Next up is Kiriko's Pixel. Cleanse 5 negative effects with one use of Kiriko's Protection Suzu. I thought this one was going to be really, really hard because first off, you have to have all your teammates have 5 negative effects, and then you got to hit all of them with one Suzu. However, that's not exactly what you have to do. You just got to cleanse 5 negative effects. So if, for example, you get Gravitoned with one teammate, and then the Ash throws a Dynamite, and you both light on fire, and then the Somber hacks you, that's five status effects. Two from the Graviton, two from the Dynamite, and one from the Hack. You Suzu, you and your teammate, and then all of those status effects will be cleared, although you'll probably get sucked back into the Graviton. So you just gotta cleanse five status effects, and you can cleanse multiple statuses from the same person. So when you are trying to get this achievement, just wait till a lot of status effects go off, and then try and hit as many people as possible. EMP is a pretty good scenario, Graviton's a pretty good scenario, May Blizzard's a pretty good scenario, although you'll probably be frozen by that point. Truly, the best case scenario is getting EMP'd and Graviton'd at the same time, because the likelihood of three people being in that, it's pretty likely. I put it higher than Baptiste's just because I think it's going to be a little bit more situational, although it didn't quite make it into hard because looking straight down and pressing E is not that hard. You just gotta wait to get Graviton'd and status effect, and you got it. Next up is Soldier's Pixel. Get two killing blows with a single use of Soldier 76's Helix Rocket. You will probably most likely get this achievement by spamming it down a corridor. If you see a Graviton, just shoot your Helix and hope you kill two of them. Because it has to be a final blow. It cannot just be an assist. So just timing it to kill someone is really the hard part. And having two people next to each other and being able to shoot a Helix to hit both of them, it's not going to happen super often. However, if you know when to do it, it's not the hardest thing ever. But there will also be times where it's just super super easy, you see two people in a Graviton, you see that they're low, and you shoot a Helix and you get it. So I'm not sure where to put this one, because there's some situations where it's super easy, some where it's impossible basically. So I put it in the harder end of average. I do not know if this is more situational than Kiriko and Baptiste, but I put it above from personal experience because this one took me a while. I don't know why, I just can't get two people next to each other and then Helix them. So I'd be fine if this was lower down. I'd be fine if it was higher up for all I care. But it's about average, maybe a little on the harder end compared to the other achievements. And the final achievement in average is Cassidy's Pixel Spray. Get two killing blows with a single use of Cassidy's Magnetic Grenade. This is basically Soldier's Pixel, but with the grenade. I think the grenade getting two kills with it is going to be harder than Soldier's Helix. So that's why I put it there. However, I'm going to use the same reasoning as Soldier. If you see two people in the Graviton and they're low health, you just can shoot that grenade. It will blow up and you'll get two kills. So just keep throwing it down the choke point and just hope you get the two kills really. Or if you see a situation where you can get those two kills, use it then. So that means that we are now going into the hard achievements. Achievements that will take you a lot of games to do, or it will take you a lot of skill to do, or a lot of luck to do. That's about it. Maybe a combination of them. You may need a certain map that's really rare. You may need a certain scenario to happen. My headset just died again. I literally just charged this thing. The spider sabotaged my headset. You know, last time my headset died, I saw a spider. So I'm not, this is not looking good for me. You don't know how freaked out I am right now. I didn't want a sequel. The sequel is happening. Oh God. Here, I have a plan. Here, you guys can just watch over there. 
Tell me if the spider is there. There we go. Just tell me if the spider is there. If you see a spider, just kill spider. Anyways, the first achievement in the hard mode is Reaper's Q. This was, believe it or not, the first achievement I got in Overwatch out of the hero achievements. So I might be a little biased towards this one because I personally think getting a 4K with Reaper's Ultimate is pretty easy. A lot of people don't pay attention and playing him on like Colosseo, at least for me, is pretty fun. And I get a lot of kills with him. However, having the situation of being able to get a 4K, it's kind of uncommon. It's just that Reaper has such a big radius that it's very, very possible to get those kills. And just like Ramatra and just like Mei, as long as you're in something like overtime and you just pop it, you're probably going to get a lot of kills. It's just in hard because getting those four kills can be difficult. You can be slept out of it. People can be saved, shields, so on. However, if you combo this with a Graviton or an EMP, you might get it pretty quickly. They just really have to be together and you have to not get cucked over. So as long as you don't make it obvious, it won't take too long. But it's still hard because a lot of people will see it coming and a lot of people have good reaction time, so... There's a very likely chance that someone will escape. Next up is Orisa's Q. For Orisa's Q, you gotta kill three enemies with a single use of Orisa's Terra Surge. Unlike a lot of the 4Ks, you gotta actually just get a 3K with Orisa's Terra Surge. The best way, in my opinion, to get this is to see a lot of low health people, just javelin spin in, have an Ana Nana boost you, ultimate, and then just slam down, and you'll probably get the three kills. Other scenarios is have someone throw a May Blizzard on top of it. Or a Sombra can EMP for you, or a Mercy can damage boost for you, or you can just get lucky and people will be trapped in. Basically, if you have someone to help you, this achievement is not the hardest thing ever because you can combo with someone. If you cannot combo with someone, then this is much, much harder, which is why it's in hard. However, since you only need three kills, and I personally think the pull effect is really, really strong, it is very likely that you'll get a 3k if you combo with somebody else's ultimate. Next up is Sigma's Q. With Sigma, you gotta get three killing blows with a single use of Sigma's Gravitic Flux. For Sigma's Q, the best way to do it is to grab a bunch of people with Gravitic Flux in a small corridor. This should be very possible. And then have a somber EMP them to get them to half health. And then your slam back down should kill them. You are also able to shoot the people who are getting healed or have your teammates shoot them. And as long as you don't accidentally kill them before slamming them back down, you should be able to get the achievement, but it's kind of situational like the other ones. However, since it's only a 3k, it is easier. The only hard part is getting the final blows, making sure that your teammates don't kill them, making sure you get three in the first place, making sure you don't get canceled out of it. Really, you just want to hold your ultimate until you can combo with someone to get that huge 3k Gravitic Flex. I'm going to also take down my spider security cam because, um... My battery's gonna die on my phone. Why is nothing charged? All right, if a spider backstabs me, I'm sorry, guys. Anyways, next up is Bastion's Pixel. I am a little biased with this achievement. I kind of think it's kind of easy. Kill two enemies with each of Bastion's configurations without dying. In my opinion, the hardest part is getting two ultimate kills. The ideal way to get this achievement is to have your Zarya Graviton. You pop your ultimate on it. You get two kills, hopefully. And then from there, just play passively until you get two kills and recon and sentry form. This is harder than it sounds because you have to do it without dying. However, if you play passive enough or you're just good enough, you'll get this pretty easily. Just hope you have someone to combo with so you can get those ultimate kills. Or maybe you don't even need it and you can just get ultimate kills anyways. So honestly, just play Bastion normally and have someone helping you with the Graviton. And if you do get those two kills with your ultimate, then I would try to get the achievement, even though you should probably try and get it all the time. But if you can get the ultimate kills and survive, you'll get it. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to move it a little bit down. I was only putting it this high because someone said it took them forever to get it. I personally think this is even... Yeah, I'll put it down here because you really don't need help with it if you can get two ultimate kills. While these three you might need help with. Speaking of help with, Ana's Q is next. Again, this is one of those that I would actually put lower, but some people just cannot get four kills with Ana's Nano Boost. Because you gotta rely on someone else to get those kills. For Ana's Q, you gotta get 4 assists with Nano Boost. If your teammates suck, then you're never gonna get this achievement. However, if your teammate's like a Reaper, and he blossoms, and you Nano Boost him, and he gets 4 kills, then you got it. Like I said, I would actually probably put this down here. And speaking of, I'm gonna move it anyways. I don't think this achievement is that hard. You just gotta Nano Boost someone. And even if they suck, you can put them in situations where it's good. If you see a Cassidy about to just pop off his ultimate, and he's not going to get slept, of course, 
You can nano boost him and just see if he's going to get a bunch of kills. He should know that he gets more damage, so he can pop it a little earlier. Or if you see your soldier visoring, that's another good one to get the 4k with. So just nano boost people right as they use their ultimate, and you'll get it eventually. Or maybe just ultimate your tank and they'll just pop off for some reason. I'm saying that because I got it by just nano boosting a Reinhardt as he shattered and he got a 4k. Next up is Junkrat's Q. Get 4 kills with Tyre. This one took me a while, but after playing Junkrat for a while, I kind of found the stupid strategy. Just on a choke point, go behind them, pop your ultimate as close as you can to them, and then just get a 4k. That's about it. You can also combo it with an EMP or Graviton to guarantee to get it. It is a little easier than some of the other ones, but because their radius is a little bit smaller and because he doesn't do like Roadhog amount of damage, anymore at least, there's a lot of times where they will survive or you just don't hit someone. So it's a little bit hard. However, I think it's very, very possible. You know what I just realized? I don't think my headset is dying. I think because there's no noise coming through it, that's why it's turning off. Oh my god. How long has this recording been going on for? An hour. Oh my god, that's totally why my headset turns off after an hour. Oh, I'm freaking stupid. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, getting a 4k with Junkrat's Tire, it's kind of self-explanatory. Just EMP and get it. It's, it's just rough. You'll get it eventually if you try hard enough. I'll try and go through it a little quicker because they're kind of the same. Soldier, get 4 kills with Visor. Just EMP and then nano boost them. You might get it at that point. You just gotta get lucky, get on high ground, get above their tank, and just kill everyone on the team. And then hopefully your team will help you deal with the tank, and you may get an assist on them and kill him. So just combo with people, nano boost, EMP, and then just pop your ultimate and get a 4k. Basically all the 4ks are in hard, but they're not impossible, you just gotta get a little lucky. Soldier's visor is not that hard to use, and that's why it's a little easier than some of the other ones. Speaking of easy, Hanzo's Dragon. You gotta get a 4k with Hanzo's Spirit Dragons. Quite honestly, unless if you're going to get lucky, you got a combo with a Zarya. So it's really all about that Zarya getting a 4k Graviton. That's the best way to get it. However, if the Zarya is good enough, all you got to do is shoot your dragon to it. So it's self-explanatory. Just get 4 kills by shooting your dragon towards a good Graviton and you got it. Otherwise, just hope you get really, really lucky and get 4 kills with your dragon. Next up is Farah's Cute Spray and they actually changed the achievement since I got it. So with Farah, you... Wait, the wiki is contradicting itself. So on this wiki, it says kill four enemies with a single use of barrage as Farah. And then if I go to the achievement section, it says kill four enemies in a row without touching the ground. What the heck? This is the same wiki, by the way. I don't know if I'm going to unfull screen to show you, but it's the same wiki. Why is it different? Anyways, um, I think it's the barrage one. I can just go load into Overwatch real quick to check. If you're wondering why I'm not using the official achievements on Overwatch, it's because I hate the menu music, that's about it. Overwatch has the single most annoying menu music I have ever heard. Cause it's just like... <laughs> Let's listen to that beautiful menu music. Kill four enemies in a row without touching the ground as Farah. What the heck? Which one is it? It's just lying. Alright, well after knowing that it's actually that achievement... I thought it was you have to get four kills with barrage if you have to get four kills with barrage i would say it's hard because hanzo's dragon just takes less skill i guess with far you gotta actually aim so if your zarya gets a 4k graviton you'll probably get it by just barraging into it however now that i know you just have to get four kills without touching the ground it's a lot easier so as long as you're good enough with farah to stay in the air infinitely you'll probably get this achievement pretty easily so i'm gonna move it down to honestly I would move it all the way down to like here because honestly staying in the air and getting four kills is not that hard especially assists and with a mercy pocket it's even easier so just play the game normally and you'll just get it however if you have to get four kills with barrage i'd say it's about as hard as hanzo's dragon one speaking of hanzo hanzo's pixel i think is harder than the q you gotta get three killing blows with a single use of hanzo storm arrow not two like the other one, three. That means three out of your five storm arrows have to be killing blows, which is really, really hard, and I might put it higher even. Heck, I'm gonna actually put some of them under this because I think this achievement is very situational. Getting three kills with storm arrow is already hard enough, but getting three final blows is actually very hard. And now that I'm thinking about it, it's so situational that I might move it the very hard. It's just, I have never had a scenario 
where I saw three injured people who didn't get instantly healed that I can just storm arrow. I think your best bet is just to see a Graviton and just <laughs> shoot people. I'm really relying on Graviton for these achievements. Basically, Storm Arrow only does 65 damage per arrow, and you only get five of them, which means that they have to already be injured, and you have to hit at least three out of the five arrows and make sure it kills them. It's just there's so much in the game that can stop you from getting this achievement. So I'm going to actually put it in very hard. It's very, very, very situational. And then you gotta hit the storm arrows. So I'm very glad I have this achievement. I think this is very hard. Uh, you guys tell me, especially the new Overwatch players who never got to have scatter. I think this achievement is very hard. And I don't know why I even put it in hard. This one is just very hard. You can't even gimmick it. You just have to see the situation and then just storm arrow. Unlike Bastion's cute spray where you can just shoot his ultimate into a graviton. For Bastion's cute, you gotta get 3 kills with a single use of Configuration Artillery. Basically have a friendly Zarya just ultimate, and then you just slam your ultimate into it. The only reason that Bastion's cute spray is higher than Hanzo's cute spray is just because there is so much room for error. Bastion only needs 3 kills, however if you mess up and you just don't time it right, they will have a lot of time to react, and they might get away from your artillery strike. Unlike Hanzo's dragon, which shoots pretty quickly, you don't need to really aim it, and even though your Zarya has to be decently good and get that 4k grab, it's not impossible to get in quick play. It's just a lot harder to do the Bastion grab combo over Hanzo grab, so that's why. Next up is Reaper's Pixel. For Reaper's Pixel, you gotta get 3 solo kills with a single clip of Reaper's Shotgun. Now this is very hard if you think about it because in most scenarios, it's gonna take you like 3-4 to four shots to kill someone. So getting three solo kills is going to be very, very hard, and you're going to have to aim really, really well for multiple people. Except there is something that saves you. If you have Death Blossom, what you can do is you can shoot the three people with your guns, and then as long as you hit all three of them with your shotgun, you can actually finish them off with your ultimate. So as long as you get the kill, with some of the damage being the shotguns, and no one else shoots them, you got the achievement. But you have to make sure it's a solo kill, and that's why it's so high up. I said that Reaper's Death Blossom achievement, where you have to get a 4k, is pretty easy comparatively to the other ones, because he just does so much damage and he kills them so quickly. But getting three solo kills and making sure you shoot all three of them with your shotguns before Death Blossoming gives them so much time to react and gives your teammates so much time to shoot them that it's going to be kind of difficult However, like I said, you probably should be shooting them just to do a little bit of chip damage before you ultimate anyways. It's just more the fact that you have to hit three different people with it, which gives them so much time to react. But it's not the hardest thing ever because you do have to get only three kills over four. So I'm not really sure exactly where to put this one, but it is hard, but it's not very hard since Reaper just is an easier character and his ultimate can save you and get you that achievement pretty, I guess, reliably if you're good enough. Again, it's always luck based and I'm not really sure what to say about it because if you see the situation, it's easy, but if you don't see the situation, it's just impossible, so I put it in hard. I don't really know how to explain it, but if you see the situation where you can shoot three of them in ultimate, it's likely that you won't get the achievement. However, those scenarios are not the rarest thing ever, so it's just in hard and not in very hard because Reaper's kind of easy to play, his death blossom is kind of easy to use, it's really about hitting three people and then being able to ultimate them without any of your teammates shooting them. Next up is Cassidy's High Noon. Get four killing blows with a single use of McCree's ultimate. The best way to get Cassidy's Q is for an EMP to go off and then you get four people. The only issue is that there's a lot of things that will cuck you over like shields, defense matrix, uh, getting canceled out of your ultimate most likely, or four people just not being in line of sight. So really you just gotta get a risky flank combo with an EMP, and you'll hopefully get it after a couple tries, but there's just so much that'll cuck you over. Most likely the thing that's going to stop you is not having four people in your line of sight. However, once it does happen, you just got a high noon, hope they don't run away, hope they don't cancel you, and then just don't click it too early, but don't click it too late, and get that 4k. It's going to take you a lot of tries to get this achievement, but the only reason it's above Reaper is because with Reaper's Pixel, you can kind of control the variable. You can just shoot, 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 ultimate. With Cassidy, you gotta wait for the enemy team to make a mistake 
and stay in your line of sight. So I just personally think it's more difficult because there's more counterplay. Next up is Diva's Q. You got to get four kills with a nuke. Again, nuke, EMP, very good combo. You just got to get lucky and have all four of them there, or all five of them, and then get that huge nuke off. There's a lot of things that can cuck you over. Nuking on its own will get cancelled by a barrier, or they're just going to run away from it, so you kind of need Sombra for the 4k. Well, I guess you don't need it, but you need a lot of luck if you're going to not use Sombra. So the nuke just takes so long to go off that a lot of people can just run away from it realistically. Getting a 4k nuke will just take a lot of tries and a lot of luck, so just keep nuclear bombing and EMPing, and you'll eventually get it, but it is still very, very hard. Or actually, I should say it's just hard, because saying very, very hard means that it'd be in a different category. With a Sombra helping you, it makes it a lot more plausible, but I still think it's one of the harder 4Ks. However, I think Genji's Q is a little bit harder. With Genji, you gotta kill four enemies in a single use of Genji's Dragon Blade. If you are very, very, very good at Genji and you get nano boosted, you might get a 4K. Why did my headset just turn off again? Why is my headset just dying randomly? This is cringe. Maybe I should play something so my headset doesn't die. So anyways, as I was saying, Genji's Dragon Blade, I'm not very good with it. Pineapple Pen! But in all seriousness, if you're not very good at Genji, this achievement is going to be very, very hard. However, if you do play Genji and you combo it with an Ana Nana Boost or a Zarya Graviton, or both even, um, a huge grab can really get you this achievement. However, a Baptiste can screw you over by just Immortality Fielding, or a Kiriko can Suzu and they might get away. So this will take a lot of practice, but in all honesty, it's not impossible, because you just have to take a little bit of skill and a little bit of luck, and you'll get it. It just takes a lot of practice to do. One that I think will also take a lot of practice is Sojourn's Q. Get four killing blows with a single use of Sojourn's Overclock. Uh, this is another one of those where you actually have to get the final blow and not just the assist, and I don't know why they did this. So what you want to do is Overclock, have a Mercy Damage boost you, and just start pelting people down. Hopefully you get four headshots in a row, but realistically that's not going to happen. So you just kind of got to get a little bit lucky and just hit those body shots, get those 120 damages just over and over again. For the average player, this will be quite difficult. However, this is not quite in very hard, simply because there is some things you can do to get it more easily. Although I do have to say that for somebody who's not good at Sojourn, this is very hard, but some people just can click with Sojourn and will get the achievement, even if they are average. So I'm not sure whether to put it in very hard or just hard, because it really is just about aiming and a little bit of situational stuff. Guys, I'm going to be honest, the pen pineapple pen is still in my head. Pen pineapple apple pen, dance time. Uh. Credit to freaking talking nonsense for making this six years ago. If I was to give a summary on why I put Sojourn's Cube Spray here, I will just say that if you can aim, this achievement is not impossible. You just get a mercy pocket and then you just go ham on people. However, for the average player, this is going to be hard. And I would even put it in very hard because it's just very hard. And I don't know if it'd be harder or less hard than getting three kills because it's a lot less situational and more skill based. So I've actually changed my mind. I'm going to actually put it at the very bottom of very hard just because I think for the average player, Getting four final blows with an overclock is going to be quite hard. However, for someone really adept at Sojourn, all you have to do is get a damage boost and you'll get it pretty easily. Just slide into their team and just headshot everyone. So this is one of those where I'm not really sure exactly where to put her, just because I don't play Sojourn either. But I think it's going to be very hard for most people. Also, did I do Baptiste? I'm pretty sure I did, right? Because I was talking about the four immortality preventions. Did I forget about him? I must have just forgot to move him. Honestly, the spiders are just getting to me also. Here, I'll just list no more pineapple pen. I really hope that doesn't get copyrighted. Anyways, moving on to the very hard category. Although there's already two up there because I'm dumb. These are going to be ones that are very hard that take a lot of skill and a lot of situational stuff happening. So let's get into Baptiste's Q. And I personally think that this one you can do, but it's going to be very hard. You gotta amplify 2,000 combined damage and healing without dying as Baptiste. The reason that this achievement is at the very bottom of very hard is because you can use multiple amplification matrixes. 
However, the enemy team has to be in line of sight of that amplification matrix. And then you have to do 2000 combined damage without dying. So the enemy team has to let you shoot them for tons and tons of damage. Or you have to amplify a ton of healing. But most people are just going to move out of line of sight of the amplification matrix so they don't die. And honestly, healing your teammates through it is not going to do too, too much. At least towards the achievement. And then if you don't get in one amplification matrix, you have to survive until you get another one just to do another huge amplification matrix. So it's in very hard because the situation of you being able to do so much damage that you get 2000 combined damage and healing without dying, it's just very, very unlikely. Like I said, you can use more than just one amplification matrix, but even if you got three of them, for example, you still have to do like 700 damage per amplification matrix. And just so many people will just move out of line of sight. So it's very hard to have the situation where you can just keep pumping out amplified damage and healing, even if you are able to survive. So that is why it's in very hard. However, it does take less skill than Sojourns, and it's honestly less situational than getting three final blows with a single storm arrow. So that is why it is there. Next up is Life Weaver's Grip, and I'm gonna put it here. For Life Weaver's Pixel, you gotta prevent three deaths with Life Weaver's Life Grip without dying. In all honesty, this one might actually be a little bit easier than I'm giving it credit for because you can actually gimmick this. So let's say they shoot a Hanzo dragon. You can tell one of your teammates, hey, can you leap into the dragon for me? They leap into it. You grip them at the last second and then you get a death prevention and you just do that over and over again. But the hard part is actually surviving for those three life grips. So I might be giving it a little bit too much. It may be down here probably actually. As I said earlier, I might have some biases because I don't play Life Weaver that much. I do think he's kind of hard to play. It will be a little difficult because you will grip someone from almost dying and then it won't give you that prevention and you'll just kind of be like, how? And then you have to not die for three of those preventions. It's just I put him in hard because you have to tell your teammates to actively put themselves in bad situations, have them almost die and then life grip them, or be so good at life gripping that you can just get it on your own. However, that takes a lot of skill and I think the average player will not be able to do it without dying and doing it three times nonetheless. So I do think this achievement is hard, but I actually moved it out of very hard because I changed my mind. However, as always, tell me down in the comments what you think, especially the people who have this achievement. And now we have the infamous Lucio Pixel and Zenyatta Pixel and I'll just put them both down. I'll put the Zenyatta Pixel down and then I'll put the Lucio Pixel down. I think the Rapid Discord is harder. So for Lucio's pixel, you got to get three killing blows while wall riding. The best way to do this is to boop someone off and then jump onto a wall. If you do not play Lucio, this achievement is very, very hard. If you do play Lucio, this achievement is a lot easier. For the average player, I'm sure they don't wall ride all the time. So getting kills while wall riding is going to be quite difficult. And I think their best bet is to go on something like Li Zhang, do a huge boop and then jump onto a wall quickly. However, there's a lot of room for error and you kind of have to bet on your enemies being stupid. So this achievement can take a long time, but if you're skilled enough, you can definitely do it. It doesn't even have to be a boop. It just has to be a final blow. So you can just shoot them normally for all the achievement cares. But you have to make sure not to die and get three killing blows while wall riding. With that being said, Rapid Discord. Get four kills or assists with Zenyatta's Orb of Discord within six seconds. This one I call the hardest to get because of how situational it is and how long it freaking took me this achievement took me how long do it how long have i played freaking zenyatta for i literally started not enjoying overwatch because of this achievement i would say that 90 percent of my playtime on zenyatta is trying to get this achievement because i don't really like playing zen and it took me a long time literally all you have to do is discord people and then they have to die really quickly. I have 21 hours on Zenyatta. Probably 18 of that was trying to get the achievement. I know people who got this achievement in like under an hour. But I also know people who got this achievement after 30 hours of playing him. So here's my reasoning for putting Zenyatta at the top of very hard. With Lucio, you can be skilled enough to wall ride and shoot people down. With the Hanzo one, I would honestly say it's kind of more difficult. But at least with him... You can see someone injured, you can see someone else injured, and then just like spam an arrow into them, spam an arrow into somebody else, and then spam somebody else down with the other three. Honestly, I think this one's even harder, let's be honest here. Getting three storm arrow final blows is kind of hard. But then with Sojourn, you can just hit four headshots, 
And then with Baptiste, you can just amplify a ton of damage and then run away and just do it over and over again until you get it. While Zenyatta, you have to actively be there, discording people over and over again. I do have to say, you don't have to have your ultimate. You don't have to wait any cooldowns. You just have to make sure that people die to your discord. So you have to have a team that focus fires and you have to do it so well that you do it within under six seconds. It just doesn't happen that often and it is very hard to do. I cannot set up this achievement. You have to just get it while playing Zenyatta normally. This is kind of the same thing with Hanzo's Pixel. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, Hanzo's Pixel is kind of the same thing as Zenyatta's Pixel. You gotta kill people in six to five seconds. It's between three and four players. The only difference is that Zenyatta just has to discord them, while Hanzo actually has to get a final blow. I'm not sure. Maybe Hanzo's Pixel is actually a little harder. Hmm. The only issue is that Hanzo's Pixel used to be different. So you can actually tell me down below if you think Zenyatta's Pixel or Hanzo's Pixel is harder now. I'm gonna put Zenyatta's Pixel as harder, just because it's so infamous for being such a difficult achievement. However, if you actually think Hanzo's new achievement is the king of being difficult, there you go. However, there is one achievement that is harder than all of these, and that achievement is the friend zone. How in the world do I get friends? Anyways, thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I tried my best. However, it's been a long time since I got a lot of these achievements, so it's very possible that I put them in a weird place and they may not be as hard now as they were back then, or it may even be harder than back then. So comment down below what you think. Join my Discord if you want to attempt to complete the friend zone <laughs> achievement. I still don't have it, obviously. And I want to open the door so badly to see if the spider is still there. But I don't think I can get myself to do it. So I will update you guys on the spider in my Discord if it ever comes back. But anyways, like I said, like and subscribe and I'll see you guys later.